Hi, I'm Randy Hollenbeck, and this is the Music Roundtable. Today on the show, we have Zach and Howard from pop punk band Cotter. Hey, how are you? What's going on? I want to dr- jump in uh, some of your history, your background, how you got into music, and some of your musical influences. Zach, you want to take it? Or you want me to take? It? Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and start it off. Um, man, uh, I was kind of indoctrinated into music. My parents started taking me to concerts like when I was in like the second, third grade. So uh, I got lucky. I got to see Aerosmith when I was in the fifth grade. Um, and uh, I got to see a 16-year-old Johnny Lang open for Aerosmith at like a w- was Players Amphitheater, uh, and that you know stuff like that just is like oh, I love music, I love music, and uh, I bought Third Eye Blind's uh, self-titled uh, album in the sixth grade, and I took it home and just listened along, read along with the lyric book, and I'm just like I got le- I got to learn to play these songs, and that's what that's when I decided I wanted to get a guitar and and that was going to be like a serious thing that I, I did in my life. And that was probably my biggest influence on, on starting to play music and also like how I, I write music now. And for me, all right, now I know Aerosmith is cool, but my first concert was destiny's child. All right. I really think that sparked this fantastic journey that we're going on. Uh, no, but it really was Destiny's Child at Clipper Stadium. Cooper Stadium, I think it was. Um, but no, I, uh, I started getting into music because um, it was really two bands, Depeche Mode and uh, Depeche Mode was my first love. I mean, I can every song from 1980 to 2006, I know all the ones. And then, um, and then My Chemical Romance came along and I got into them and I, I realized that this has such a profound impact on me. Like it, it affects my entire day. It affects my mood. It, it can change everything. Uh, and then I, I, you know, I figured that oh, I realized that that's something that I wanted to chase. That's something that I wanted to do. Um, you know, and then a bunch of mental health battles in my life have come and gone. And it's like a mission almost to be like, you know, this music helps. Like, like that music helped me. This music will help you. Or at least that's the goal. Uh, uh, first instrument I picked up was a guitar and I learned some MCR songs Then realized I'm terrible at guitar. And then, uh, I started to play the drums and I started to work on my voice. And so I'm a, I'm a, a fair weather drummer and a vocalist. So that's where I landed. Can you tell me how the band formed, how you guys got all together? So Howard and I met at a bar I wasn't even supposed to be at because, uh, I got dragged to a country show with one of my friends and uh, she, we just ended up going somewhere else. So it wasn't our, our, our scene. Uh, and uh, I met Howard uh, at the library bar in, uh, in Clintonville. Uh, and um, we instantly shared a uh, affinity for uh, the early November. Yeah, Ace, A, A Cinders, and uh, that's how we got to start talking. And this was back in like 2015. 14 2015 and uh we didn't actually i remember because this this ba- this place has like this really dumpy bathroom like petroff it's a college bar and i'm using the bathroom and i hear some guy outside talking about the early november and i'm pretty drunk so i'm like who is this guy that's fucking awesome no one ever talks about them and it was zach and the rest is history <laughs> 
Yeah. It, it, it took us a while to kind of get things started just because we were kind of in different places in our lives that we weren't really on the same page musically or what we wanted to do. And then uh, summer of 2019, Howard hit me up. He's like, hey, I want to I want to be serious about it this time. I'm like, all right, let's let's do it and see what happens. And, um, you know, we started out as like an acoustic duo. We we had a, a song that we just recorded with a buddy of ours that we first thing I ever had on Spotify. Um, and from there, we just put a band together with uh, with some friends and people that we knew through other people. And, uh, you know, we played our first show in December 2019 after being a band for six weeks. Uh, and and that's where it all started. And we've just been, you know, grinding and, and doing all the work that we can to, you know, to make this something that, you know, that we take seriously, that other people, uh, you know, want to be a part of. And uh, so far, like it's it's gone off way better than I was ever anticipating. Uh, every every everything that Cotter's doing right now is is new to all of us. How, how did you come up with the band name? So Cotter is <clears throat> uh, a friend I, I used to have. She unfortunately lost her battle with depression, and it's her last name. So, you know, I mean, not to get too heavy, but it's like, hey, dude, you know, you, your story didn't end quite yet. We're carrying you, you know, we got you. So. What city is your band based out of? Columbus, Ohio. Good old Columbus, Ohio. When the pandemic hit and live music shut down for that whole year, what did you guys do? We worked. <laughs> We did everything we we did everything we possibly could to try to move the band forward in a time that there was like no live music whatsoever and you know we had just started we played our second show right before everything got shut down and I feel like that kind of knocked the wind out of a lot of people uh, in the music scene uh naturally and so we just decided that well, we're just going to keep it going. So we spent a lot of like the initial quarantine period uh, using like uh, doll recorders on our computers to uh, send demos back and forth to each other to try to kind of build those. So that way we could take that music into the studio and actually get something released since, you know, we couldn't play live. Well, at least we could start putting out content um, for the people that already know that we exist and, uh, really just start building from there. And so we spent all of 2020 just uh, writing and recording and uh, really kind of focusing on just the band itself and doing doing everything else that we could that wasn't live music. Uh, that's that's honestly one of the ways that I knew that this, this band was going to work out is because all of us as a unit pivoted hard. And none of us dropped the ball. Like we all worked as hard as we could to get into the studio to try to get our first EP out. Like it was, I kind of miss it. It was fun, but it was it was very like nice to know that the guys that are in the band were like, "This is gonna work" because we're all willing to put the effort in, and we're not gonna let this pandemic slow us down. So, when the lockdown lifted and live music returned did you notice whenever you played out that the crowd was more engaged there's more energy in the crowd oh yeah uh definitely i feel like the coming back from you know the the, the end of lockdown was uh it was it, it's, it's been really surreal because our very first show that we played uh post lockdown we sold out within within 24 hours um, granted it was a socially distant show, uh, but like that really, that really kind of blew us away that, you know, we hadn't played a show in over a year. We've only ever played two shows and, you know, like that was just based off like our, our, our friends and fans that have been following us, you know, through that whole period, you know, they have come out to support big time and that kind of, that there was that very first show when we sold that out where we're like oh wait like actually 
this might be something here. And, and I think the, the independent music scene in Columbus has really been a great thing to be a part of uh, over, over this past year, uh, because I feel like every band that we've played with and everybody that, you know, that, that we've collaborated with, they're all just excited to just be doing something. And so like that energy's that energy has been there every, every live show, especially the, uh, the, like the independent, like local stuff. Um, it's, it's been a really fun, awesome place to be. Yep. Yep. Couldn't agree more. You can keep secret when I fade to black like a heart attack. A floodgate so big I can't hold back from breaking down in how I'll be addicted to my apathy. I'll never let you down, but now she's trying. Okay, I wanted to go into some of your songs. Um, there's a song called Cigarettes and Razor Blades. Now, there's a voicemail at the beginning of it. Is that a real voicemail? It is not a real voicemail. That is that is my good friend, Haley Tandy. Uh, we brought her into the studio. She was there for maybe an hour, and she just... I, I told her, I was like, I need you to really bring, like, crazy energy and she was like, all right, leave me alone. And she like stood by herself for maybe 10 minutes and then just laid that out. So like, I just had to think of everything that drove me insane. And I just screamed into the microphone. I was like, it's perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. And she's like, hold on, let me get mad real quick. <laughs> yeah, 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 let me get mad. Yeah, I, I, uh, I can relate to that message because I've been in some crazy relationships like that where like they're they're insane for no reason at all it's just you know you know i mean it's uh it's it's weird how life works you know because that was it was that breakup um that with the the girl that song is about that breakup uh was the reason i was like i need to do something for me i need to really work on music i need to start homing in on myself and uh man she um uh, she might have keyed my car when that song came out but now it's been out for two years, three years, going on three years, two and a half years, and her and I are best friends, and she's engaged, and that's awesome, and her fiance is fantastic. It's just weird how time works, you know. I think we were both. Yeah, I I hung out with her and her fiance at Riot Fest. Like they're just like actually kind of been uh, really awesome friends that I've made through Howard, and like actual supporters of the band. So like. You know what was a what was a situation you know in the past like actually developed into a better friendship for Howard and 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 a, a new friendship for me. So uh, that was that was really cool that you know we're all like, hey, these are just songs like they 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 really identify our feelings and what we went through at the time that we wrote them. But like you know sometimes those feelings pass and 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 we, and we move move on and move forward and uh in this case we were able to move on and, and forward uh w with a really uh awesome friendship so yeah yeah it all worked out in the end didn't have a bad ending howard uh on keep driving there's a lyric in there it says fade to black like a heart attack floodgates open and i can't hold back did that just like come to you one day or did you you got to talk to zach yeah, so uh, that was that that was that was my song. Um, I wrote that about a little over a year ago. I had a really really intense like anxiety attack where like I was going through nothing but just like the worst talk tracks, like the worst like suicidal ideation. But like it's it's the the kind where like I know I'm not going to actually like do anything, but like that's all all the thoughts that are repeating in my head. And so that, that was really just about that, that panic attack and that feeling of like, where everything like, um, you know, if you, if you're familiar with, with having like anxiety and panic attacks, there's kind of this feeling after it's over where it's like, you've just kind of like dissociated 
and you know every everything just like reality doesn't really quite feel real and and that's really kind of the words that i use to describe that that feeling of like that disassociation that derealization and um that actually kind of helped ground me and get me through that and uh but yeah that was uh that sucked (laughs) i wanted to talk about all in my mind it got a really cool guitar picking during the verse and really catchy chorus i want to know if that that was like an easy song for you guys to write that song how did i actually that was the first song we wrote together actually so that was that was the uh acoustic song that i had mentioned we had recorded uh way back when the band first started when we were just a duo um so we had we had the you know the picking and the the melody and the all the lyrics and everything on acoustic but we really struggled to bring that song to life uh, as to arrange it for a full band, because we were either playing it too slow, too fast, in a key that didn't work for uh, a full band. And, um, you know, uh, Howard, Howard's buddy, uh, Will Dealey, uh, really helped bring that song to life and, like, turn that into, like, kind of the full band, what that is. And, um, yeah. I still remember when that, that our um, acoustic version was the only thing we had on Spotify. And the band was just the two of us. Uh, Zach and I met up to practice, and I think he, I mean, he was just having a bad day. Um, that he just, you know, like showed up kind of blobby. But Will had sent me what he was like his vision of what it would be full band, and Zach hadn't heard it yet. And like I, Zach went from like kind of blobby, and then I showed him Will's vision, like his little thing that he created on his own. And like I've never seen his face glow like in that moment. It was like kind of blobby to like oh my god this is amazing and then it was off that core idea that um you know the instrumentals are all zach and the lyrics are all us there's just a little bit of pepper that he put in there that helped us really bring it all together and um bring it full band that that was really a defining moment for me was when that happened that was when i felt like Oh, like this can actually be something. Like I, I actually started to hear the vision that I had for our music happen in a real way by someone who was insanely talented, and it was just like, oh, this is this is what this is what this can be, and that that's what really solidified before we were even a full band. Like, okay, this is this is where I want to put my time and effort into this project. So uh, I have will to thank for that. I think it was shortly after that you and I started. Everybody, we got everybody in. Yeah, I sent that. I sent that uh, that little clip that Will sent us to to my friend Tessa, and she's like, uh, "You should talk to Andrew about playing drums." Like, I'm uh, like, I know he wants to play. I'm like, "All right, well, I, tell him to come play with us." And you know, it was it was through that that we were able to recruit people to uh, to be a part of the band, and um, so we have a, a a lot to thank for that. Like, that's kind of where everything started was was around that song. So uh, being able to release it as a full band uh, single uh, this fall, uh, it felt like, uh, you know, things have kind of come full circle. What do you guys got planned for 2022? A lot. A lot. We're, so, we, so Zach was talking about the tours. Um, we're writing right now. We're working on new releases. Um uh, definitely equipment upgrades working on stage presence working on i mean there's just so much that now that we know where we kind of stand in the music scene it's time to i guess home in on our own performances and uh release new content and also tours we've never done a tour before so that's it's definitely something big we're going to try to get done once or twice here in 2022 how can we get a hold of you guys facebook twitter instagram uh instagram is what we are as a band most active on um at least if you're if you're trying to get in touch with us directly like um messaging us on instagram like we always reply pretty much right away uh i run our twitter uh i don't understand twitter (laughs) 
Like, like, like I just I do it because I know it needs to be done. Um, Howard's supposed to be doing that with TikTok, so you know we're. Joel's got we got TikTok covered. We've got TikTok covered. I also stand TikTok. I'm just old. I like I look at TikTok. I'm like, get off my lawn. Like, I don't I don't understand how this works. Yeah, although I'm I'm the resident old person in the band. I'll be turning 36 this in February, so <laughs> every most of the rest of them are under uh, our 29. That's all the questions I have. Thanks for coming on the show today. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, no. Thanks for having us on. Um, uh, you know, like these. It's just it's it's really awesome to kind of go through this experience with, um, you know, just like actual like feeling like things are being taken seriously, not just by us, but like other people that hear us. And, um, you know, like it, uh, for the first time in my musical career, like, I feel like I'm part of something that's, that's actually special and, and, and has some real value. And, um, you know, when, when we get invited to be a part of, of, uh, of things like this, like that really, really helps like affirm that. And, uh, so, so thanks for having us. We appreciate that. Yeah. We very much appreciate it. It's 3 a.m. There's a picture of you in my head. There's something wrong with the scene, cause you're only a dream. Don't tell me that it's all in my mind. I'll just forget about it. Tell me I'm just wasting time. Give yourself a reason to try. Just like a ghost when I need it the most